We are so excited to bring you this episode of The Deep Life. Today, we are joined by Megan and Corey Thomas of VHP, Vitality Human Performance, which they co-founded together. And I have to tell you, this was one of my favorite episodes we've taped because we shared so many laughs, so many great conversational points. They're our friends. We've known them for years and we can't wait to bring you this episode. Yeah, this was so fun. And, you know, not just because we're friends and because we, you know, we laughed and had a lot of jokes, but also they are so knowledgeable and so passionate, really, about all things wellness and you know, strength and conditioning. Yeah, we dive deep on what it takes to build a business, especially once you're in a relationship. Mm -hmm. So this is really similar to Dan and I's story, um, being together and then starting our own company. Same with them. And they're so inspirational. You know, they started Vitality Human Performance out of their home garage gym, where they brought clients in to train, and their business just grew exponentially and they got their own gym space last year right in Connecticut where they both live and it's just it's so inspirational to hear how they got to where they are because they're they're great people busy people who have dedicated their lives to helping others achieve their health goals yeah Corey and Megan are both both have so much going on but they're also so successful in their lives and I think that success is a testament to the people that they are and before opening Vitality Human Performance, Megan was an EMT. She also has experience uh, competing as a power lifter. She's a certified functional strength coach. She is the CEO of Vitality Human Performance, and she also coaches. Um, Corey, Corey and I actually go way back. We were college football teammates. And we've been friends for you know, 15 years. Um, he is by far one of the strongest people I've ever met. So, so impressive. Uh, but he's also a full-time police officer. He's a certified physical preparation specialist. And he is the head coach for Vitality Human Performance. So yeah. it's like, I don't know how, how they do all these things. It's amazing, but yeah. the conversation was so fun. Yeah, and we dive deep into what it is to live a really busy life, yet get all of those health benefits, the healthy habits, on track so that you can achieve what you need to do. So they, they're a wealth of knowledge in this area. Like we said, we had such a great time talking with them, but one of the best conversational pieces that I really enjoy diving deep with is Megan is pregnant. They're expecting their first child, a baby boy this summer. And so we get into what it's been like for her to adapt to her body changing and the different foods that she's eating, the ups and downs that come along with pregnancy, as well as how her training has changed. So tons of amazing nuggets of information and tips on what it is to be healthy and live this healthy lifestyle. So without further ado, let's get deep with Megan and Corey. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Deep Life. We have such an exciting episode today. We've got Two of our favorite people with us, Corey and Megan Thomas with Vitality Human Performance, VHP Training. So welcome you guys to the Deep Life Podcast. Hi, hey. thank you so, so much for having us on. Definitely. Thanks for having us. Yeah, this is one. I'm so excited to have I'm you guys so on. I've been, too. I've been looking forward to it <laughs> for a while. Um, so yeah, I guess quick background to yeah. people. Um, we go way, way back. <laughs> yeah. So we've, Lisa and I have both known Corey um, going back to 2005. Corey and I um, were college football teammates. So we've definitely, uh, we've been through a lot together. We've been seen him train firsthand. So I, I can say Corey is an absolute savage like, <laughs> in the weight room and on the field, like just one of the strongest people I've ever met. Um, incredibly hardworking. And I think he's got, he's got a lot to offer. So definitely pay attention here. And then Megan too, like you guys have both done some powerlifting. You're both strong as hell. So I think yeah. Yeah, we've started following Megan for a couple of years now um, on social media, and we're just like blown away. You have, you guys have such an amazing relationship, you know, in the gym, outside of it. So we're going to dive deep on everything. We're going to get into your background a little bit. Like I, we want you guys to talk about your credentials and being personal trainers and the gym that you own. But before sure. we do that, we want to congratulate you because mm -hmm. you just got married a few months ago. Yes, and you're expecting a baby this summer, which is so exciting. We're going to dive deep into Megan's mm -hmm. pregnancy as well, kind of towards the end of the podcast and your training and if it's changed at all. But 
first off, let's kind of go into your background. Just, just give us a little bit of, you know, deep into who Megan and Corey are. Totally. I'll start. Cool. Okay. So hello, I'm Megan Thomas. Uh, so, so happy to be here. First of all, um, I am a certified functional strength coach and the co-founder of our personal training studio, Vitality Human Performance. Um, I could honestly go on for 75 years about my background and just how I got here, which I, we could save another podcast for yeah, that. But to, to sum it up briefly, um, really going back to, to high school, which I know is very far back, but, um, I kind of had a, a very hard time just feeling like I, I didn't fit in anywhere in high school. I, I did cheerlead throughout middle school and high school. Um, I dabbled in some sports when I was younger, but nothing ever really felt like it just truly fit. And it wasn't until I got out of high school and into college that I, I kind of found the gym and uh, kind of, again, just was kind of finding my way through, didn't really have a clear understanding of what I was doing at the time, but uh, eventually got into strength training kind of on accident. I really just, I, I specifically remember the first time I deadlifted 135 pounds, which is, you know, the 45 pound plates on either side of the bar. And I literally, I talked to Corey and all of our clients about this all the time. I remember looking at it and I'm like, there's no way I'm going to be able to pick that up. And I did at like, and for not just one, like multiple reps. And it was literally that day that I was just hooked on strength training. And it kind of just, my passion grew ever since. Um, like you mentioned, I then, you know, years later dabbled in powerlifting and um, my passion kind of just took off from there. And then obviously here we are today, but before we get into like the details about the gym, I'll let Corey go too. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Um, hi guys, I'm Corey Thomas. Uh, like Dan said, we went to college together. I have been strength training probably since... 87 years. 14. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my my older brothers played football and they were always training out in our garage and I would go out and watch them train and they were waking up in the morning at 5 a.m. to go train before school just for football and stuff like that. And I kind of saw that. And then I started playing football in high school. I, didn't, I could I was too big. They didn't have those leagues. They didn't have those those older those light those older like heavier leagues when I was younger. So I couldn't play organized football until I got into high school. And then when I got into high school, I started seriously strength training and I kind of realized like, okay, like I'm a big guy, but I'm also undersized, right? And in the and in the, the football world, you know, you got guys like Mandeville and freaking Brian Gibbons and stuff like that. You're like, what the heck? You're right. So I'm undersized, but I'm like, okay. The the I had a strength coach in high in high school, Mike Golden, he was like, You gotta make the difference. The difference is gonna be the weight room, how hard you work. So then I just went like, that was like, that's all he had to say to me. I just went, I just went ham, like head down, just started training really hard. Um, I, unfortunately I got, a, I got a scholarship to go play at Northeastern, which was, which was awesome. That's all my life. Unfortunately. <laughs> right. I, I was going to say, I was like, did it say, did you say unfortunately? I, mean, I said fortunately. <laughs> <laughs> fortunately. <laughs> Oh my! <laughs> unfortunately, I, said, I got a fortunate. full scholarship. Right? <laughs> That's gonna be the yeah. title of the episode. <laughs> unfortunately, I got a scholarship. Yeah, I really wanted to play seventy thousand, seventy thousand yeah. dollars a year to go to college. Really like, bummed I couldn't do that. <laughs> Yo, that fortunately, amazing. I got a scholarship to play uh, football at Northeastern, and <laughs> I kind of, I've always, I've always loved the weight room. As you, you know, and strength coach Saint Cyr was, yes. he was everybody's best friend, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Love that. Love that guy. Still talk to him to this day. I still call oh, him. Yeah, no, I still talk to him. he does. Yeah, I still talk to him. We text. I, I call him and ask him for advice and things like that. And um, I chat with Art Horn every now and then. Yeah. And just, I kind of in college was when I kind of really started like asking questions about strength training. Like, you know, why do we why do we do this? You know, the why's the hows. And it was and it was kind of an interesting experience because training with Coach St. Cyr, who was who was very old school very get after it, very, very unique in his approach. And then also sit, learning from Art Horn, who's was very scientific in his approach, like kind of, the, it was kind of towards the new age, which, which you see now, very like bio, biomechanics oriented. That's cool that you got a little bit yeah. of both. Yeah, and it, was, and it was crazy because like, I think that some people also thought that like Coach St. Cyr didn't know the science side, but he did, very, very smart right. dude, very smart dude. And I just got so, I got so lucky. I just, I kind of attached myself to both of those guys. and. And we had a great experience. I, I I learned so much strength training in high school, and it was just and there's nothing. Excuse me, in college, and there's to honestly, there's nothing better than strength training with your college teammates. Like I mm. I compare like I compare it all the time. Like I'll hear a song like 
a Metallica or a Foo Fighters <laughs> or something. I'm like, oh my God, it sounds like the college weight room. Like I'll, I'll say it to this day because like there was, there, was, there was nothing like it. And, and it was, was probably Frack playing that music, right? Probably Frack. Yeah. yeah probably. <laughs> you, you, we were not allowed to touch the radio in the weight room. You could not touch the radio. It, I, think, I, think, I think it was, I feel like it was Cord Parks. He touched the radio one time. Yeah, yeah. And Coach Lane was not having it. Not having. He was like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa!" <laughs> Who touched the radio? <laughs> Never happened again. But uh, you know, and I, it's kind of funny because I went, I became a criminal justice major, and I started out like PT. But you know, 9/11 happened and all this other stuff, and I, I was, all, I grew up around cops, so I was like, you know what, I'm gonna get into law enforcement. And then you, you, you just, you, <laughs> you come full circle, and you're like, yeah. wow, yeah. I'm back, I'm back where I was. You know, I, I just always had this passion for strength training yeah. but now it comes from a different place because now i'm like the stuff we did in college was kind of crazy we did some crazy stuff in college not kind <laughs> of it was crazy yeah. <laughs> and then like <laughs> I, I power lifted i power lifted in my last year of college and after i got out of college i powered for, for for some years still holds the squat record of in his high school I <laughs> yeah. 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 What, what was that for, for the people 700 pounds <laughs> at 16 years old yeah. we all oh! absolutely yeah. insane, insane. <laughs> no one has broken that record to this day yeah. So when I said earlier that Corey is an absolute savage, I wasn't making that up. I wasn't right. I, I don't I was even compare. 700 pounds. <laughs> oh man, but but yeah, but now I'm I'm kind of like you know we're we you know we we we're nursing those aches and pains. So my training just comes from a whole different place where I really had to dive in and kind of be like, okay, like you know I can't squat 700 pounds every time I squat. Like, this is just not <laughs> right. this is not going to work. So and that so that's kind of where I am. I'm, I'm like. I'm, and how our business yeah really how our business is and how our business came about and like i'm just always a student in the strength game i just love it i can read yeah. anything training i love everything training i love forever body, students. bodybuilding i love powerlifting i love all the biomechanics stuff like i just i just nerd out if <laughs> if you see you megan will take take picture of, of all the little the trails i leave in the house it'll be like yes. a coffee a water a pair of socks a, a and, pair a of socks and then a training book on top just, <laughs> like okay all over that corey has been here <laughs> That's awesome. Well, yeah, and, and then came and then came the gym. You know, yeah, that's actually that's a perfect segue. So, like, just like you know, kind of not babying, but taking care of the aches and pains that you really got in yeah. in college and all throughout um, football is really, I think, the what helped birth, if you will, our business model, our entire business model for our gym now. Um, so really our, our personal training studio started out of the garage of our home. Um, and we, we trained out of our garage for two and a half years, yeah. two and a half the, years. Yeah, half um, years. Yeah. yeah. And it just, you know, we were doing it really on the side is how it started. Just training our clients, um, Corey being a full-time police officer. And I actually at the time was also uh, an EMT mm -hmm. and it just became something that we, our, our passion drove us to want to help others. And we, it was just happened to be that we had this space in our garage. We just, you know, sacrificed parking our cars in the garage yeah. and turned into a gym. Um, and it just became this incredibly cool obviously an environment that we were able to create out of our home, but like the, the community of people that we were able to kind of attract, um, was just incredible. And I think our, you know, like our, like I said, our business model of, um, being able to improve the overall quality of our clients' lives through strength training, yes. um, and really the mentality of training for life for the betterment of our lives, um, is where it all started in the garage. And then in, in March, of last year so yep. going my gosh yeah almost almost a year. Year. Almost a year. we're coming oh my god we're coming up on a year yeah. <laughs> i didn't even put that together Time flies. yeah so almost a year we've been uh we moved out of our garage and are now in our our new legitimate space which is so so exciting that's um, amazing. we've been able to increase our clientele there and it's just been incredible yeah yeah yeah, yeah i love definitely. that yeah, it's, yeah. Been, it's been it's been fun. It's been like a lot of you know. It's, it's funny that people people don't realize that like when you tr when you train for like that deeper purpose, like you mm. you know, and, and it's most people like you know, I just want I want abs, you know. Yeah. I really want to. I really want that quad sweep. Oh, can I have the old <laughs> you know, sweep. I want the V taper, and it's like, well, you know, all the things that you do to make sure that your shoulders don't hurt and your knees sure. don't hurt, and your that low you can, back and that, isn't that, constantly that, sore. Right, you, you can bend down and tie your shoe, walk up a flight of stairs, like. All those things, shovel snow, plus eating real food, <laughs> will give you that. Sure. But like, but it's like you having the V taper is not a deep enough purpose for you. Like, sure, you know, a deep enough purpose is like, oh my god, like I can't even pick my son up off the ground. Yeah, that's a deeper purpose. So it's like we try. Or to, I can't pick up a heavy load of laundry without throwing my back out. Or yeah. just 
daily activities, things that we all do on a daily basis that yeah. are hindered by lack of strength. Yeah. You know? But yeah. So just trying to get people to understand that, like, when you, as you get stronger in the gym, like, your life is, your life is going to improve. Those aches and pains. Yeah. Yes, it always says that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I think it's yeah. Mark Bell's quote. They're like, strength is never a weakness. Yes. Never. Yep. Like, the stronger you are, everything in your life is going to get easier. Totally. Absolutely. And I think what you're saying there is, is amazing about like having, having that deeper purpose because making change in your life requires a lot of energy. Yes. And if you're going to put that energy in, like it can't be enough for like, just, just like an, a nice V taper, you know, yeah. app. No. you're, you're going to lose interest at some point when you realize how difficult it is. Totally. 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 But it totally. also what you're saying, like those doing things right and taking care of your body and being strong and looking good are not mutually exclusive. And it's like exactly. the thing that you do to strengthen yourself, like from your core is going to carry over, to, uh, just like you said, to everything that you're doing. And it's, you're going to look better. You're going to feel better. That's yeah, like an added benefit. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Totally. And I think that's the part that people get hung up on, right? As we, well, we also live in a world of quick fixes. We want yes. everything overnight. And I think we get so caught up in that, you know, the V taper or the, what do you say? The quad sweep, the quad the, sweep. you know, the, the <laughs> six pack abs or leaner arms or whatever it may be, whatever your, you know, your aesthetic goal may be, which are valid too. Those are totally valid. Of course. But it's, I think people forget or, or they don't even realize that just by focusing on and being patient with the fundamentals to get you there, like you're going to get there, but by getting there the right way and in the right amount of time and in a way of doing so, that's also going to improve literally everything else you do. It's the, the reward is going to be so much greater, you know, yeah. and you still get that aesthetic goal. Yeah. So it makes you happy. Strength training makes you, it makes you it happy. Really like you literally like yeah. you get stronger, you, you wake up, you got more, you have more energy. Like yeah. you're you, sleeping better. You you're get, eating better. You can care. Like, you know, some of our clients will walk in and be like, you know, I carried every single grocery out of my car and up the stairs yes. in my house the other day. I'm like, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 One trip is the way to go. I'd rather like, hear that than I lost 10 pounds. You know, exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. And like yeah. we, we have some, some clients are, some of our clients in their high fifties, we've got clients in their early sixties. Yeah. And like they come, and they come in and, and no, and no knock to our younger clients, but like right. they see some serious results, like yeah. serious results as far as like aesthetically energy wise. God, yeah. Like I, I remember one, I remember one time this woman was very skeptical about strength skeptical. training. Skeptical. <laughs> skeptical. <laughs> skeptical. <laughs> I swear I'm educated, guys. I, yeah. I, 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 I know. That's you know, my unfortunate education. Un unfortunate education. <laughs> I swear I went to class. <laughs> but she was very skeptical about strength training. And then, you know, a couple of weeks in, I saw her. She's getting interested. She's asking more questions, which is great. When people ask questions, we love it. This uh, means you're, it. you're interested in what you're doing. Yeah. And then one, one day she came in and uh, she was like, yeah, I'm not feeling too good. I was like, you know what? Sometimes you just got to punch that clock. Let's just punch that clock today. Alter and, the plan a little yep. bit. Yep. And, and, and surprisingly, she had a really good workout. She was able to push herself. And then she, she texted me the next the next day. And she was like, oh, my God. Like, I so needed that. I had the best night's sleep I've had in, in months last night. And I'm like, that's, that's, what, what, that's what I'm trying to hear. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's yeah. like, that's what I care. That's what we care about, you yeah. know? Yeah. Like, that's, yeah. that's, you know, sleep is huge. And <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> just, 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 <laughs> no. Yeah, just showing up on a day when you're not really feeling it and like kind of pushing yourself. I always say like commit to the warm up. And if you can get exactly. there, get to the gym, you can warm up. You're yeah. going to feel better than when you walk in the door. And if that's all you can do, that's enough. You walked in, you feel better than, than when you got there. Absolutely. Totally. You're going to get through your warm up, you feel better. And then it's like, all right, let's, let's start doing some stuff. Let's yep. just do it. I'm already here. I'm warmed up now. Totally. I feel good. Yeah. yeah. That's, sometimes Absolutely. it's all it takes. Okay. Yeah. And then that, that improves your day. And then like you said, like then that improves your sleep. And then you wake up the next day, ready to have another great day. And Absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. our whole thing, like momentum. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Momentum. You get that momentum from committing to one day and then just carries over to the next. And then like Megan, you said earlier, like then you want to eat better. And then you yeah. want to. Yeah. It's together. a domino effect. Yeah. It's a total and then, domino effect. And it's exactly. Like, and that's that's so much cooler than like you say before, like a six pack. Right. Yeah. Right. Like, it is exciting. Like you've, you've never had abs, and then you start to see the abs poke through. Yeah. It's exciting. But it's yeah. not, it's not gonna hit the same way as like I feel amazing and I can't exactly. totally. And totally. what's what's hard about that and what what 
we strive to do, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure you guys do as well. I, it's just, it's, it's hard because the way that health and fitness is marketed to everyone, especially the, you know, the younger crowd is just all about aesthetics, right? It's yeah. those aesthetic goals. And they're just like shoved in your, our faces all the time. So I think it also just comes from experience with, with our clients, just being able to actually like, listen, just like, let's just get in the door, get the work give us a couple of weeks, give us a couple of months. What? And I think once they start to actually just experience what it is that, you know, we have to offer or what strength training has to offer outside of just those aesthetic goals. Mm -hmm. And like you said, they actually start to see it and feel it for themselves. That's, that's what's, it's the hardest part because it's a just, it's marketed in such a, yeah. I don't know, in a terrible yeah. way, but you know, no, it's yeah. just, yeah. It's yeah. the quick fix kind yeah. of microwave it's culture. Quick, right, right. right. You know, the steer people away from like putting in the work you need to, to really exactly. build a foundation. Sure. Yeah. Gain, you know, gaining, gaining momentum and being consistent isn't, yeah. isn't yeah. flashy. It's not, it's, it's not, not cool, sexy. right? Yeah. It's not cool. Exactly. Yeah. But it's like, if you want, if you want to lose weight and keep it off for a long time, that's the way you do it. But if you right. want to lose 30 pounds and then gain back 50, then, yeah. then go for the quick fix. Right. Yeah. Well, not how much weight you want to lose. Like how long do you want to keep that off? Do you want to be totally. lean and healthy for the rest of your life or for, you know, a month from now? For a, a month. From exactly. Now. Yep. Or for your next holiday or your next party. Yeah, exactly. and that's the thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that Dan and I, we say this all the time. People don't realize how badly they feel <laughs> until yeah. they start working out and eating properly and stuff. So I do want to touch upon that because it is that building momentum. And, you know, I, I swear to God, one of the things that's ingrained in my memory when we first started momentum a couple of years ago, a very close acquaintance of ours, I'd call him a friend <laughs> yeah. for Instagram. And he's like, well, all you guys do is work out. You're constantly working out. You're constantly working mm -hmm. out. You're really, it really took me back because yeah, of course, Dan and I work out, but we work out one hour a day. There's 23 other day, uh, hours in a day. And yeah. it's all those little things. It's the walks that we're going on. It's the mindfulness and meditation practice we're doing. It's the nutrition that we have dialed in. It's the sleep, which mm -hmm. is, I would say, up there is one of the highest, um, you know, priorities. So if not the highest, yeah. yeah. And how you kind of work that into your clientele and your clients and things like that. Sure. You want to, sorry, you want to start? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> well, def, definitely. Um, I, I think the, the first, like usually when clients first come in, we always talk to them about, you know, injury, if they have any injuries or things like that. Yeah. And yeah. then we kind of, we, we go through our assessment and then we get them set up for their sessions and they start, they start to come in for their <laughs> sessions. And then eventually it always happens. And we kind of, we don't force it on them yet, but yeah. they'll, they'll always come in and be like, oh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm feeling this way. But we kind of wait for that because that's the opening, right? Mm -hmm. We don't want to walk in and be like, you're going to train, but you know what? Now you have to eat this. Like you, we, don't, yeah. we don't want to force anything on anybody. Like, we, you know what? You're training. This, this is the first thing. Let's handle that. Let's get this yeah, down. You can't and then, just getting them in the door initially. Yeah. Yeah. Just getting them in the door, just adding training into their lives is sometimes, oftentimes yeah. a massive step. So. And, yeah. So usually a conversation will come up about like, oh man, you know, I feel like I, I'm not lifting as much weights as I did this day and I did that day. And we're just like, perfect. This is, <laughs> we've been waiting for this conversation. It always happens. Yeah. And we're just like, okay, perfect. This is where, this is where we talk about your lifestyle. Like yeah. first I was like, it's one of, it's only one of a few things. You're not sleeping enough. You're very stressed out. Yeah. You're not drinking enough water. You're either, you're, 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 your nutrition is inadequate, whether yeah. it's, whether it's your overeating, under eating, not eating enough of the right things. Yeah. And usually, usually it's always starts with sleep. Like I can't, I, oh, I'm, I'm with you on, on sleep, especially since I'm, I have to work on my sleep personally, just to be honest. Like I, I'm a terrible sleeper. I'm a light sleeper and mm. I, I'm a, so I really have to like dial in my sleep. I'm my, my brain is goes a, <laughs> going a thousand, a thousand miles. A it's minute. really probably my fault, yeah. but you know, <laughs> yeah. I got but a million it's, things it's going on. So common. I mean, everybody yeah. is like that. And this is yeah. why we yeah. do episodes like this so that it resonates with our audience. Like oh, people yeah. up there, you're not alone. That monkey brain, no. that treadmill brain, we all oh, have it. Yeah. Just cause we're, you know, and especially just cause we're fitness professionals, like we, we struggle we, we're, with we're, the we're, same we're, things. We're human students. Yeah. The same things everybody else does. Actually, it's, I'll be completely honest. It's probably worse for us because we're trying to help everybody else through their goals and put their goals first, which I always do. I'll put somebody else's goals above mine. Yeah. And then we forget about our own. Yeah. And I, I, I got to reel myself back in about, okay, like 
you're only as good you're only as good to them as you know as you are to, as, yourself. As you, are to you are to yourself so i'm like okay i should really be sleeping better let me get my sleep under order i can't yeah. be laying in bed thinking about how to properly teach a kettlebell swing or something <laughs> like that. Oh God, like this is, this is the shit to keep me awake at night like, yeah. like what are you thinking about <laughs> I just thought about another cue to teach a kettlebell swing. She's like, go to bed. Like, That's like an actual <laughs> conversation. Yeah. But, but, but you know, like, but, but absolutely, people don't, people don't know how bad they feel. Like, until it, they start to feel they, they better or, yeah. I know, they don't realize yeah. that, like, nutrition, nutrition alone, like what you're eating. Like, if you eat something, you can eat something that literally causes your body to be inflamed. Yes. So like, so, like, it's not, it's not necessarily that your knees are bad or your elbows are bad. Right. If you could be eating something that's that's bothering you, like, are you eating like are you eating like some some kind of fats or oils that are really really uh, that you shouldn't be eating? Did you eat out last night? Because I know I can tell the difference. Like if I eat all my meals at home, I feel great. Yeah. We, I can go out to eat one time and like just the oil, or whatever they cook it in, stomachs are destroyed. Like, oh god, yeah, destroyed. the feeling yeah. is like yeah, the next day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And we almost prepare for it, right? It's like, okay, we're going out for dinner. We know it's not going to be like the best next day. Like that's okay. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. I know. I'm going to have, I'm going to have the sniffles. I'm going to have yeah. the brain fog. My knees are going to be all inflamed. Yeah. But, but you know, we got to get out of the house. It was. It was, it was <laughs> yeah, it was, exactly. Yeah. You've got to live your life. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Totally. And then that shouldn't like make you go into like a spiral, like eat out once. Yeah. Get right back on track. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think people kind of get. It's like, oh man, I've been eating bad. You don't forget it. I'm just gonna keep on going. It's yeah. like, no, you don't. You don't have to do that. Like, live your life. Like, and this is the thing where we're talking about, like, kind of the V tape. Right? You can <laughs> live your life. Like, you're not a, people. Most people aren't bodybuilders. Like, you don't have to eat your chicken, rice, and vegetables every day. Yeah. And, you know, eat you know 400 grams of protein. Like that. That's not the normal. That's not the normal human being. More power to those guys because the amount of discipline they deal with yeah, is absolutely, absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. But it's like people. If that's people, not like the general population. Yeah, that's not no, the general yeah. population. And it's unfair for a person, a normal person who sure. has a, a job, you know, three kids, stress, and just wants to exercise. You can't compare yourself to that. Like that's yeah. that's just unfair yeah. to you. Yeah. You know? And I, I think that's a, a perfect point I was gonna say before. It's it's so dependent on the individual, right? And we all lead different lifestyles. We have different schedules, we have different demands. Some have kids, some have don't have kids. So I think really getting down to who our clients are as individuals and what their lifestyles look like really kind of helps us, you know, figure out which avenue to go down with them and how to help best or best help them. So like, you know, for instance, if someone, gosh, if someone works, you know, 10 hours a day, comes home, has to put the kids to bed, tries to decompress themselves for maybe like an, a couple hours, gets four hours of sleep and is up the next morning to do the same thing. They live off of takeout because they're constantly on the go, right? It's like that, that all plays a huge role in how successful they're going to be with their nutrition. Or if, you know, I'm not going to tell them, okay, great. So I want you to <laughs> cook three meals at home a day. And like, like they, this just not feasible for them. Right. So, but, but that being said, there are plenty of options that you can get for takeout while you're on the go. It's just, you have to find a healthier route or at the best option that you possibly can, right? So I think, I, I, you know, honestly, just trying to remember the individualities that we all have and the schedules that we all keep and not trying to fit people and all of our clients into like this cookie cutter mold. Sure. And it's yes. the same for everybody. Yes. It's just not true. Which is kind of what you were saying is the marketing of the fitness industry. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Everybody isn't the same. Like, yes, right. Dan and I eat and train very similar, but there's a lot of things we do differently. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm a woman that's much different. I have different hormones. I have a yeah. cycle that, you know, sure. plays a bot into it. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's very different. different. Sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. And I think let's, let's lean into that a little bit because I think like you guys are such a great, example because you're you're incredibly busy you also like you have so much going on like course that working full-time as a police yeah. officer in itself is a really stressful demanding job you yeah have entrepreneurs coaches like megan you're pregnant you guys just got married yeah. you have so, so much There's going on a couple on. things going like, on <laughs> <laughs> and you still manage to like stay in shape and like you guys both look great. You're both you know, happy incredibly and happy. happy. Yeah. And just like neither stop smiling. Like there's so much, so much that like people can learn from you guys. Like what would you kind of say is 
what, what has to be done? Like, do you guys have kind of non-negotiables in your life for like how to have a good day or how to have a good yeah. week um, and stuff, stuff you think everybody should do. And then also making yeah. the adjustment for different people. Totally. Cool. I think like, and like we said, for our clients, sleep is of the utmost importance. And I I'd speak for myself. I know when I say this, that if I don't get, I mean, like literally seven to eight hours of sleep at night, probably more like at least eight, I, I will not be at my best the next day. And I just have to know that about myself. You know, like you said, we have, we have a lot going on during our days. We have a lot of demands. We have a lot of places to be. I'm growing a tiny human. So if I'm not getting adequate sleep at night, I will not be able to function at my best. So that for me means knowing that I need to be in bed at a certain time, usually by nine 30, no later. And let's be real by eight 30, I'm exhausted and ready to go to bed. <laughs> I was just going to say yeah. nine 30, yeah, usually in bed by eight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's late. <laughs> yeah. So I have a non-negotiable bedtime. Um, yeah. And I've experienced where if I kind of sway from that, I'll feel it the next day. So non-negotiable bedtime for me, um, really just, I mean, I think I know Corey speaks for me when, uh, training and nutrition obviously play a massive role, Mm -hmm. but even just, you know, and I, we can get into this further, um, a little bit later, but, um, being pregnant has, has obviously, um, made me had to really pivot in a lot of different ways. Um, nutrition being one of them, unfortunately, yeah. um, just because of, uh, you know, my first trimester was an absolute nightmare, horribly nauseous, so many food aversions. So really my, my main thing that I could control was my sleep. Sure. Um, so that, that for me is like an absolute non-negotiable. And then depending on, depending on the day, um, my training and nutrition as well, meaning how I'm, how I'm feeling. But I know for, for Corey, you're, I mean, training is 100% a non-negotiable for you. Yeah. I I have to train at at least three days a week. I'll do three. I I do three main days. Um, I'm, I'm working on my sleep still, and I'm still like playing with little nuances to try and help myself. I'm Mm -hmm. definitely not sleeping as bad as I used to. That's just because I have so much going on. I'm I'm still working full time, the gym and everything like that. So it's so I'm still working. I'm still working on my sleep, but it's been better, uh, better lately, uh, focusing on nutrition yeah. and um, sometimes and I sometimes realizing uh, and she for, she'll force me to do this. I will like this is probably just like the football, the football player in you like we'll just I'll just go. Yeah. I'll go. I'll I'll like I'll yeah. go with no break I'll, and, I'll, until he falls over. <laughs> I'll wake up. At, I'll wake up at four. I'll go train our 530 session yeah. after our 530 session. I'll train. I'll come home, do some work on the computer. I'll go to work for eight to 10 hours. I'll get out. I'll come, I'll go back to the gym and do sessions. And then by the time it's like, I'll, and I'll just keep doing this. And I know I have to, I realize that I have to like take a break and be a little bit more in tune with my body. And, mm. and I, and I, and I've had this, I have, I've had actually a few conversations with our clients about this recently because I, and this is, and obviously, you know, COVID-19, the pandemic, mm-hmm. a lot of people are scared. And I'm just like, I was like, you know, and I was, I had to kind of, I was kind of stern with some of our clients, but I was like, you know, I was like, I was like, knock on wood. I yeah. was like, there have hardly been any COVID cases out of any of all of you guys in this gym. Yeah. I was like, you guys don't realize that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I was like, I was like, first things first, I was like, you have to be in tune with your body. And I, and I, and I said, exactly. I was like, you guys don't actually know how bad you actually feel mm. and like, w- when you're feeling tired and stuff like that, you keep going, going, going. And that's your body telling that you telling you that you need to stop. Slow down. And I and I'm I'm Mr. Go Go Go. Like yeah. I, I'll and I'll be completely honest. I got I got COVID in 2020 at the height of COVID. The very beginning. And I have yeah. never been so sick since even when we met. I, I hardly ever get sick. I have never been so sick. I had a fever of 104 for the better part of a week. Like oh, I was a yeah. mess. It was bad. It was I was really a mess. Bad. And I can literally pinpoint it into into exactly. I was like I I overworked myself. I was I was working a lot doing the gym. I actually. One of my buddies wanted to work out and I was like, you know, I, don't, I shouldn't really work out today, but you know, who, who's, who's Corey Thomas to turn down a workout? <laughs> sure, man, let's go. I did the workout. I said, I'm gonna take it easy. Never happens. Yeah. Right. I, go, I get after it. The next day I go to work, I'm at work. I'm just feeling like run down, like just completely run down. Like I can't even, I'm in, I'm in my cruiser. And I'm like, oh my God, how many coffees am I going to drink? I can't even keep my eyes open. And then I finally go home and I'm like, oh man, like, and she's like, you, I think you have a fever. Cause I'm, cause I'm like, it's freezing in here. I'm sweating. And she's like, she's like, You're crazy. She goes, you to, she's like, you need to go over there. I'm like, okay. 
And then from there, <laughs> my fever kept going up. 99, 101, 102. Oh, and I literally pinpointed, I was like, you know what? I should have fucking listened. I should have. Yeah. I was like, that workout did not need to happen. I should have went there, put a work, put it, put a workout together for him. And said, no, man, I got to take it easy. I need to rest, focus on getting my vitamins in, my vitamin D, getting for, a good re, night's re, sleep, getting a good night's sleep, dialing in my nutrition, taking in some, you know, antioxidants and stuff like that, and really doing that. And I've done a, I that I've done a very good job at doing of knowing when to stop. Like, I, and I think we've we've both kind of done a really good job at. Um, kind of playing off of each other's strengths and weaknesses, if you yeah. will, that is totally a strength of mine where I, I am very in tune with my body. I'm very good at listening to myself. I'm very good at understanding when I can push it and when I really need to reel it in. Um, and I, I think I've that. been, yeah. And I think I've, I've really helped Corey kind of discover that as well and vice versa. He's done a really good job at also kind of, you know, spreading it on to me a little bit more when t- to maybe be able to like put, put my foot on the gas pedal yeah. during those times when I do feel like I can and really taking advantage of it, you know? Yes. Yeah. I love this conversation because it, it resonates <laughs> with us so much. And like, I feel like I'm connected with you, Megan, in this aspect, because Corey, you're absolutely right. Dan is just like that. He mm-hmm. never wants to miss a workout and he's yeah. constantly working. You know, I'm kind of behind the scenes at home doing, you know, the nutrition with the clients. I'm handling all of the technology and the social media. So I'm home all day. I'm working, but Dan's still training people in person. So when he gets home, he's immediately like, he'll cook something, but then he's right back on the computer and doing more programming and all these things. And he's been, I mean, knock on wood, I'm not sure if he's had COVID, but he's Mm -hmm. definitely had a lot of kind of stomach aches and issues going on. And in it, and even that I've noticed too, he gets very irritable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I, there are Thank some, you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's one day, I remember we had a bunch of meetings coming up and he was not in a good space. And I can read that for being together with someone. someone I there was like, we're not doing anything. F the Instagram post, we'll cancel the meetings and yeah. we'll reschedule. You just mm-hmm. need to go in the bedroom. I don't know if you need to meditate, cry, journal, but you, you have to take it because like you were saying, Corey, if you can only be as good for your clients as you are for yourself. Like take the mental day. You need to have that rest and recovery for your own sanity. You do. Totally. You do. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And I even, I even noticed that with working full time too. Cause like, you know, that my full-time job isn't as, isn't as flexible. So sure. it's like, so I, I, I've had to find ways, you know, and sometimes and there's like a spurt of a few months where like, I have to work almost like six or seven days a week sometimes. Yeah. Wow. And, and, I, and I've had to, I've had to tell myself like, you know, and I'm, I'm that guy that's like, I don't like saying no. I always hold on my end of the bargain. I'm always going to work hard and do what I have to do no matter what. Yeah. So I don't like saying no. And it's like, it's my job. I got to do it. Like my name's on it, but I've had to be like, you know, you know, I've had to say no, I've had to learn yeah. how to say no. Yeah. You have to. It is that kind of skill. Yeah, big it, it is saying no is a skill. You have a to like learn skill though. Yeah, it's not yeah, easy. Yeah, exactly. You gotta develop yeah. it. You gotta say it without feeling bad. You almost have to be like a little selfish. Like yeah. you do. Yeah. It's boundaries. Yeah. It's boundaries. Yeah. Which yeah. would be like it's kind of like we in we kind of adapted in like our spiritual growth. Like we didn't yeah. Yeah. Talk about boundaries in college or in our twenties. Like, what is this word boundaries? Yeah, but Dan's the same. Yeah. Like, he'll say yes. Yeah, like someone yes, will be like, I, he'll say yes, and it's like, you're don't yeah. worry. That's like, you, yeah, because yeah. <laughs> I think we were all taught that it's like it's disrespectful to say yes. no, and you're not, you know, especially in college, right? Or you know, with your professors or this and the or with an exam or whatever, whatever it may be. Like it's, it's disrespectful to not yeah. go above and beyond and to not Absolutely. always agree or yeah. do the, go the extra mile, you know? Absolutely. So I think yeah. now as, as adults and especially as entrepreneurs, you want to always be saying yes. You want to constantly go above and beyond. You wanted to just go, 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 go. And I think that's been the toughest thing, yeah. especially for you to have to learn to yeah. still I, be okay with saying no. I, I've had, I've had to, and it's like, you're, I'm telling someone like of rank, like, no, I can't work. I'm not doing yeah. it. And it's like, and I, I, I've had to do that. Cause I mean, one time at work, I was just, it was one of those days where I probably should have said no. And I like flipped out and it was just like, <laughs> it was just like, it was like months of just frustration. And I scared a few people. Like I, they, they, like they, they would, they were afraid to talk to me. They like sent one of my friends to come find me and say, Hey, they really want you to come upstairs and talk to you, but they don't, they didn't want to, they didn't want to come ask you themselves. 
And I was just like, you know, I can't, I can't do that anymore. I was like, you know what? I was like, I don't want to feel like that. I was like, yeah. I was like, I was like, I, I can't imagine how you felt. You were probably terrified. I'm yelling at you in the middle of this room, and you, I was, you're probably terrified. But I was like, imagine how I felt that I did that to you guys. Like, that's not, that's not what I do. Mm-hmm. I was like, I don't want to. It's unhealthy for me to push myself to that point. Like, well, yeah. what was my blood pressure like at that point? In time, <laughs> yeah, right? you know what yeah. I mean. Like, yeah. who knows? Like, who knows? So, so I was like, I, so saying no has, is like has been very freeing. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yeah, totally. I think kind of like what you said earlier, Corey, I think from a young age, like we condition ourselves playing football to just to keep saying yes, obviously, yeah. and just pushing and pushing. And like even like when, when things hurt, like you don't like how every day during football. <laughs> oh, <every> day, <laughs> but you, you still have to go out and play yeah. and then something else hurts and like you just keep going and going. But then, like, you can't just keep carrying that into the rest of your life. Like, you yeah. need to listen to your body. You need to know that even, even what you're saying before, like, a workout, like, that's a good thing. But when it, but it's still stress. Yes. Yes. So you have to, you have to know, like, even if you're, if the things that you want to keep doing are good for you, too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. And pushing, Absolutely. pushing yourself too hard in the gym at the wrong time isn't the right thing so like what Megan you were saying is like knowing when that moment comes when you are feeling good and right. you can really put your put your foot down on the gas pedal yeah yeah it's really important but also knowing when like it's not the right time to yeah yeah, yeah. I think it comes in knowing yourself better I'm sorry Elise go ahead no 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 no, no yeah. that's great that's exactly right and in that intuitive nature is going to come as you build the momentum with getting your nutrition right in your mm-hmm. sleep you're that's tapping true. into that you know, that inner being that wants to be healthy and sustainable and live life, like literally just love and happiness. Yeah. (laughs) totally. Yeah. I mean, like just, that's just like the name of your podcast, the deep life. I think people don't look as deep into their lives as they should. Yeah. Like everything is, they take everything at face value and it's like, no, you, you probably feel that way. Like you, you probably just need to a day by yourself. Like you need to take a day off of work. Like you need to drive down to the beach and have lunch by yourself and go take a walk. Like People need to people need to do that stuff. You know what I mean? Like mental health days are called a mental health day for a reason. You know, <laughs> we need them. It's and it's not. It's so it's so frustrating for me to to that it's viewed as such a you know a weak thing to to need to take advantage of that. Yeah. When in reality, if more of us did, my God, imagine yeah. how much happier the world would yeah, be. Yeah. You know? I know. Yeah. It's no different than needing to go to the gym and work out. Like I also, I, I need to work out every day. I need to eat good quality food every day. I need to sleep every night. And I also need to go for like long walks by myself. Yeah. Or yeah. else, what Elise was saying, or I just keep getting wound yeah. up and wound up and then I snap. And then it's like, that's, that's not good. Yeah. yeah. I know. We all, you, everybody has those non-negotiables. Yeah, I think it's a really good segue into, Megan, your pregnancy. And well, first mentally, obviously, that's like a whole <laughs> shift. Um, but just kind of t- tapping into that because we haven't had, obviously, we're new to the podcasting um, for only, you know, a couple months. But with some of our listeners, I mean, being women who are pregnant or maybe thinking about getting pregnant, like, let's just dive into that before we wrap up so that you can really give your experience and your knowledge on how it's yeah. been for the past couple of months for you. And if anything has changed with your, you know, training, I know obviously nutrition, that can be a thing, but I love that you're allowing yourself to stray. And if you want, you know, I'm hypothetically saying like, if you want a cookie, not to deprive yourself of that, <laughs> do yeah. it to yourself and then get right back on the health train right after. <laughs> totally. No, absolutely. Ben and Jerry's has been my best friend. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> But also, so has like steak and rice, you know? <laughs> exactly. Balance. Oh, balance. Yeah. yeah. Balance. Um, yeah, totally. So this is my my first pregnancy. So it has been a serious learning curve. And I I what I say to Corey most of the time is how crazy it's been for me. I think the biggest thing that I've noticed is just how much people don't like women specific, specifically aren't honest enough about how difficult the actual pregnancy stage is. Mm. Um, You know, you expect that when the baby actually arrives and is here, that's a massive life change and it's a massive shift um, for both mom and dad to go through. But what I didn't expect is how big of a shift that just pregnancy would be also. Of course, your body goes through changes and, um, you know, it's, it's a big, 
mental and physical change. But um, I just, I didn't expect for it to be as hard, honestly, as, yeah, as no, it is. Yeah. Um, so that is what we want. <laughs> oh God. Oh yeah. It's been, a, it's been interesting. <laughs> um, it's so strange because I think as a, as a woman who feels so incredibly lucky to even have gotten pregnant and let alone on our first try, mm. um, we're so incredibly lucky and I'm incredibly grateful to even be pregnant with our first baby boy, yeah. um, but I know, <laughs> but, um, I felt so guilty, especially uh, really during my first trimester. So I'm, I'm just about 15 weeks pregnant now. Um, so I just entered my second trimester, but during my first trimester was really, really challenging. Um, the exhaustion that you feel during pregnancy, which is completely, it's, it's completely logical and makes perfect sense. when you think your body is literally working and putting all of its energy towards growing this tiny little human. Yeah. So it makes, you know, the exhaustion is real. And you hear about, you know, the exhaustion and the morning sickness, and you you're aware of all of these symptoms that might might come with pregnancy, but good grief until you actually <laughs> experience it. The, I like the level of exhaustion that actually happens is I, it was a struggle to literally just get out of bed and wow. you know, like, and that's even sleeping like nine hours at night. Wow, it, wow. it was just, it was incredibly difficult. So, um, you know, the, the exhaustion and the having to deal with the food aversions and really all of the changes within everything that, you know, makes me, me like mm-hmm. my, my love of, of food and my love of sleep and my mm-hmm. love of training and all of that really had to shift. And I just wasn't expecting that, um, overnight really. Wow. So that has been, it's just, it's been really, um, challenging. Yes. But, uh, a massive, um, learning curve in me and just kind of practicing grace and patience with myself, yeah. um, this massive change. Yeah. So, um, training honestly throughout the first trimester did not happen, which was really hard for me because of just the constant nausea and exhaustion. And I just felt so unlike myself, um, that it just, it wasn't even a thought in my mind. Like it could, it just wasn't going to happen. But, um, what's what I always envisioned pregnancy being like for me as I think the the hardest part about all of this because of my love of strength training and my love of eating properly and you know all everything that makes my day what it is um I just envisioned that going right along into pregnancy with me yeah. and nothing would change and as long as I you know I was um training a certain way before pregnancy you can mm-hmm. safely train that way throughout pregnancy as well unless of course you know directed otherwise by your doctor or if you, God forbid, have a high risk pregnancy or anything like that. But otherwise you really are for the most part able to train perfectly normally. Um, and the fact that that wasn't at all how I pictured it going was really hard. So really just having to, to pivot and have to practice even more self-awareness that I already yeah. had before this, you know, um, that's, that's been the, the biggest thing for me. Um, and now, thankfully though, during my, I'm now in my second trimester, I am much, much better. Like my energy is through. Yeah. No, we're we're not gonna, we're not I didn't know if we were going to make it. Like, I'm, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> it was, oh, geez. Our, Sorry. Our dog. Our dog is <laughs> overly Parker, bad. is it Parker? Oh, yes, yeah. He's here. Oh, yes, yeah, John. Oh, 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 my my God. God. oh my God. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> Oh my gosh, we should do a part two of the deep life with Parker and Eddie. Oh Oh my gosh, please, (laughs) please. Yes. Parker is an interesting character. He's such a big guy. He's amazing. Oh my gosh, no worries at all. (laughs) Um, What was I saying? Oh yeah, we weren't going to make it, but we made it. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, we we made it. Yeah, we definitely made made it. it. The food of her, I think for me, seeing her go through like the, I think, yeah, I, I I wasn't expecting her to train. I'm like, if you feel like crap, lay down sure you know what i mean it's like lay down like like, listen the the gym is always going to be there like lay down you know but it was the food aversions were crazy because she would like she would have a craving for something and like literally make it and then as soon as i smelled it smelled it "Mm, nope done can't do it like she would have have, oh yeah like i remember one time she made a she made this beautiful you know turkey bacon egg and cheese on a sesame bagel it was great so good And and it literally she made the whole thing did it all nice and literally 
just put it on, put it on the counter and walk away. I, like, couldn't. I can't eat it. I was like, what? Food aversion is the crazy. It's the craziest yeah. thing. It's so, it's so crazy. Wow, it's that's really crazy. Crazy. Yeah. What do you normally love like, all of a sudden overnight literally make you want to vomit. Yeah. It's the strangest like, thing. Like I was on my own. She couldn't meal prep. Like she couldn't cook. Like she could, it was like the chick, she could like the, the raw meat or chicken. Or oh, I, wow. Not even close. I think, and sometimes like she would go all day and she couldn't eat anything. And I'd be like, you got to try something. And like her, her old trusty was like French fries. I was like, well, shit, if you got to eat I, French fries, you got to fucking eat French yeah, fries. I, <laughs> <yeah. You> gotta- <laughs> so McDonald's French fries, I swear to God. And I don't ever, like, I am not a fast food person. I'm like, truly not. Of Unless course. I was like, you know, drunk in college. Yeah. But, <laughs> but these days. Yeah. 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 Good, old, yeah. good old B-hop. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Love it. Oh my God. Chicken Not anymore. I know. Yeah, chicken yeah. I know. Did you hear chicken lose clothes? I was yeah, very, is very upset. That was an upset. Tragic. I know. But you back, took me there once. I know. But, but back to your, back to your French fries. <laughs> yes. So I like, for whatever reason, I have no idea why McDonald's French fries. And I'm assuming that, you know, obviously the, the, the carbs, but then the high sodium content sure. for whatever reason, it's highly you know, powerful. Mm-hmm. Yes. It just like, and, and honestly, kind of like, you know, on the blander side, easier on the stomach, it's just a fast digesting carb, you know? Mm. So it's, I like, it was what a couple of weeks that like, it was all I could have. It was all I could stomach. And it like, I felt awful because I'm like, my poor child is getting no nutrition. (laughs) Like I'm getting nothing in my system, but it's, it ended up being fine. You just, I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. It's yeah. literally one yeah. of our clients even um, who actually, she, she has a, a one-year-old daughter herself. So she's went through pregnancy not long ago. And she told me, she was like, Megan, the first trimester is literally just survival mode. Like wow. you just do what you have to do to survive. Yeah. And I now can attest to that. It yeah, is absolutely. survival mode. No, and I think that's great. And I think again, like a lot of listeners hopefully will resonate with it. And like, you know, I, I feel like I know a bunch of people who have mm-hmm. been pregnant, especially recently, like every, all of our friends, but no one tells me these things. They'll say, eh, I'm not feeling that great, but I, I love this. I love the conversation. It needs to be said it because does. kind of like the mental health awareness, it shouldn't be pushed down. It's a part of life. And just oh God, yeah. thing, like, you know, your nutrition should be on point. But at sometimes it's not gonna be, and you don't need to berate yourself or kill yourself. You're 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 weeks past that, and now you're right back on, you know, your yeah. health, your nutrition. And I think that that's totally. great, really encouraging for women and men to hear Corey's side of the story yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, think, I mean, I'm <laughs> I'm definitely about to compare pregnancy to football right now. But, <laughs> yeah. but like I'm because like you, you know like er, everybody says pregnancy is a beautiful thing. It is pregnancy is an amazing thing. It's it's definitely it's a gift. It's like the gift of life or whatever. It's also awful. But, it, but it's also like <laughs> they don't, they don't tell like they don't tell you like that it's awful. Like you can, you can pick ten moms out there and ten out of ten moms are like oh my god, it's so beautiful. It's the most beautiful thing. And I was like I don't know what you're talking about <laughs> because I saw my wife for the first three months. That shit was not beautiful. <laughs> it's, like, it's like like football. Somebody said hey man, you know what. Football is going to be great. It's going to be so easy. It's going to be awesome. No, mm-hmm. fuck, it's not. That <laughs> shit. We have meetings and, and lifts and practices. Like, we have no life. That, that's like, so that's like, that's what I'm comparing it to. I'm like, yeah, I love it. Like, pregnancy is a pregnancy. somewhat fair analogy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Games on Saturday to, you know, practice every day or camp or yeah. spend all year and 5 a.m. workouts and the freezing cold and all that. Ugh. All the miserable things that go into it. Nope. Yeah, no heat in that damn yeah oh, the, oh, the cage we had like a, we used to practice in this indoor facility at, at northeastern um the cabot center now it's all beautiful it's turfed out it's all yeah. but not when you were yeah. there but when, we, when we were there they wouldn't turn the heat on and it had this terrible cement like green ground oh, we, yeah. we, we have to be there at 4 a.m 4 30 oh, in the morning yeah. workout in yeah. the morning yeah. february through january it was horrible it was horrible have you ever been pregnant I feel like I am. I feel like we're. I feel like I feel like we're pregnant together. I'm just yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's hysterical. Now, you, now that you're feeling, like, I'll say better. Oh uh, God! Oh yeah, are, we can say better. Yeah. Are you back to training regularly? Like, what is very, your very very slowly? Yes, okay. I totally have the energy to do so. And now, me and Corey actually just talked about this this morning. I'm actually going to have him um, write me my own program 
not that I couldn't do that myself, but it's so much nicer having a spouse who can, who all oh, yeah. it. <laughs> um, so yes. So now that I'm feeling much better, thank God, um, uh, focusing on strengthening and well, keeping a strong, uh, pelvic floor is going to be mm-hmm. massive for me. Um, and then also just really focusing on just obviously overall strength, um, and exercises to accommodate the growing belly, of course. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So I'm, um, you know, again, my, my workouts are probably not going to look exactly like they did before pregnancy, right. not because I can't, but because I'm also just really keeping in mind with, um, it being my first pregnancy with seeing how things feel, seeing how I'm feeling on a day-to-day basis. So I think, um, just keeping things to like 30, 45 minutes is going to be super beneficial. Um, cause again, you know, just obviously being my first pregnancy and having, you know, everything else we do on our plate, getting in and out of there is going to be super important to me. Um, but it's also just as important to feel good and to still be able to, yeah. Not. so yeah, yes. you're so, finding the right balance, yeah. figuring things out. Yeah. Finding the balance, finding and the balance. Three months off, even if you're not pregnant, you, you're going to need to ease back into things. Exactly. You know, exactly. Slow. And then to have those extreme energy demands. Yeah. That you have no control over. Like you get sure. Yeah. That makes sure. sense. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you walked a lot during the first trimester. Well. I did. Yeah. She, so she walking walked, was walk, huge yeah. as is always, it always yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. Walking is underestimated form of exercise. Underestimated really form of exercise. Yeah. 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 It truly is. Um, so that, that was my savior during my first trimester. And when I wasn't able to get an actual, like good workout in getting in a walk every day was, was m- literally my savior. So that's yeah. great. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. So essential. And, yeah, it is uh, yeah. super encouraging here. Well, oh my gosh, this has been amazing. Yay. <laughs> Yay. I think we kind of like to end it. Like if you guys have any words of wisdom or anything like you think is really important, Dan always likes to frame it this way. And I, I really like it. Like think back to like your young selves. Is there anything you want, you would want like those young people or like you like 10 or 15 years ago, like insight or a little nugget of wisdom that you want to tell your younger self, but it's really our audience. (laughs) Um, I think the biggest thing for me, uh, probably action alleviates anxiety. Woo! Love that. Wow, I love that. Because just, just because like I, I'll sit and I'm I'm the king of I'm the king of like you know what that can wait that can wait and I'll just it's just on my mind all the time and it's yeah. and then the next thing you know it causes you all this undue stress and it's just like just just fucking do it just do it just do it or create a plan to do it and then that will alleviate your anxiety or sometimes and just, especially even if it's not yet perfect yeah yeah, yeah. Like I think, and it, even, even with training people are like, oh, well, you know, I'm going to wait to the new year. I'm going to go to the gym and yeah. do this, do this, do this. I was like, why does it have to be perfect? Yeah. Just go, go outside and go for a walk and then come back. Yeah. And then go for a walk again and come back. You know what? When you come back that time, do 10 squats after it, your walk. Like, it, it literally be can be applied to anything. Yeah. To get yeah. And alleviates anxiety. That is yeah. One of our like favorites. Yeah. yeah Cause yeah. I, I just have, yeah. yeah, I get, I get like cerebral overload and then. <laughs> I'll just like, I'll just shut down and be like, okay, that's too much. I can't, I can't do it. But I know that when I take action, I feel, I feel a lot better. Yeah, I, I, and I just feel like, even if like, you know, even if like, I, I was like, you know what, even I just took action on some things like, and I feel like there were, there were some turning points a long time ago where I was like, oh, you know what, I should really get into this fitness thing and this health thing. But I was just like, you know what, I kind of talked myself out of it when I'm like, I, I just took the action. Like, why not just take the action then? Obviously better late than never. You can do something at any point in time. Yeah. But I just felt now I feel like I just feel like I wish I took more action when I was younger. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's, that's me. Too. I was the same way. Like I tried, I tried, this has always been my passion. And I tried to convince myself that I needed to get like a real job. Yeah. Like I yeah. College, oh, I'll study finance and I'll I'll go get a job in an office somewhere. And the whole time, like in the back of my head, it's like gnawing at me. No, you, you need to be a strength coach. You need to you need totally. to work fitness. And then yeah. finally I like kind of gave in and it's, it's been incredible. That's, yeah. I know. I really, Absolutely. I really resonate with that. So Megan, you need, you need to top action. Uh, <laughs> oh God. <laughs> well, you know, it's so funny. Mine was literally going to be take your time. <laughs> 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 Mainly, but you know why? I don't have because time for this. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. That's amazing. I don't have time. <laughs> it's amazing how it, 
you, you play into each other, right? It's the element flow of your relationship and how one's wired this way and the other wires that way. And that's why your relationship mm-hmm. works. So yeah. I, I am, and that's, that's perfect that you said that because <laughs> I am known as like the, like everybody who knows me, I, I jump before I look kind of a person. So I, I see no, why. yes. So I have no problem taking action sometimes to a fault. Yeah. <laughs> so I, so for me to my younger self, and, and this again, could be applied to a million different things, but, uh, take your time just in terms of we don't need to have it all figured out by tomorrow. Yeah. Don't have to everything done by tomorrow, you yeah. know? So that, but, but it also is a great thing to sometimes take a leap of faith. So it's, yeah. no, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Take your time, hurry up. Take your time and yeah. hurry up. Yeah, I love that. Strengths and weaknesses. <laughs> yeah. well, oh my gosh. Well, I'm that is... yeah. oh, sorry. No, no, no. I was just going to say both of those were absolute words of wisdom that I think all four of us could have benefited from in our yeah. college years and early 20s and stuff. And um, we really, I, I, we can't thank you enough for this amazing conversation. We're absolutely going to need yeah. to do it again. I swear we could have talked for more hours yeah, getting more deeper really. into everything. Yeah, so. so much to talk about. We do. We have to do this again. Yeah, maybe after baby boy and how your lives have changed after that too, because I bet that's going to be a whole new <laughs> gift for you. That's yeah. going to have to be a 24 hour podcast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, where, if you'd like to direct people to visit a website or your social media, yeah. is there anything? Yeah, totally. Uh, we have both. So our website is uh, vitalityhumanperformance.com to start our full name. Perfect. Um, and then our Instagram page is at VHP training. Perfect. And we'll link those in the show notes as well. Um, Perfect. Again, yeah. we thank you guys so much for being on this episode of The Deep Life. And thank you so much. Thank you guys for having us. Oh my gosh. We wish you all the best in this little new journey that you guys are going on with a new little baby. Thank you. Oh, thank you, thank so, you much. so much.